Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Stefan, the Photobook Guru. And in today's very chill video, I want to show you how I create illustrated travel maps for photo books, for customers, for myself, and for other purposes such as um, bags and wall art and mugs. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. I create these illustrations on my iPad and my choice of software is or app is um, Affinity Designer. You could obviously use Procreate, other people do that, but I like to work with vectors and it's mostly kind of geometric shapes as opposed to kind of shadings and uh, pixel art. So that's the best for me and it was very easy to learn so far. I'm, I haven't been doing this for a very long time, but it's been an amazing journey and it always makes me feel very calm when I start drawing and creating maps. So the illustrated maps were available in my web shop a couple of years ago, or maybe a year ago, and then I took them off because I found them extremely difficult to price because as you'll see, they take a very long time to create. So it's very difficult to come up with a reasonable price for it because obviously you want to award the time you spend on it, but it also has to be realistic for a photo book. Anyway, as you'll see, the maps are going to be back now in the web shop with a more realistic price. So you should only choose these for kind of very special projects where you really want these illustrated works and bear in mind that the price reflects the amount of work that goes into them and they are very highly personalizable. There's going to be more information on the website, but I want to show you how I make them instead of talking about pricing. So um, first of all, I'm going to always start with a vector map and I can use my mapping software for this or I can just use downloadable vector maps and I'm going to select one which includes the entire travel path that the customer wants or that I want and in this case I'm going to do one for Italy and Greece so this trip was going from the north of Italy all the way to the islands of Greece so I'm going to zoom the map to that extent and then I'm going to highlight the two countries Italy and Greece with uh, a bright orange in this case and and then I might make the C kind of blue. Now all of these colors are obviously customizable and it depends what you like. It could be all white and the countries could be colored or it could be black and white or anything. But this one is just going to be kind of a vivid illustration. So once I have the, the countries zoomed in and colored and highlighted, I can start kind of mapping out the locations. So I need to add a dot for each location in this journey, starting in Venice, going to Rome and uh, Sicily and then Athens and all the way down to uh, Crete. Uh, once I've put my dots in, I'm going to add the location markers, the labels, and then I'm going to create the path between these locations. Once I created the path, the first thing I want to do is start creating the main illustrations, the landmarks. So in these maps that I create now, which are purchasable on my website, the basic map comes with five illustrations and the more illustrations you want, there is a surcharge for extra illustrations. Five illustrations should be chosen for like your favorite places or the ones that you really want to highlight. Now you can have obviously 20 or 30 locations on the map, but pick the five illustrations in a way that they uh, kind of spread out nicely. So. For example, if you have 20 locations, don't put the illustrations for the first five and then nothing for the final 15 because then the map is going to be very um, imbalanced. So I'm going to start drawing my illustrations. Now I'm usually using photographs for these. Either the customer sends me or I look them up. I also like to start a new canvas or project for each illustration just so it doesn't get too messy in the main map. And then I'm going to use this photograph to kind of create a simplified version of that building or landmark. In these illustrations, I tried so many different kinds, like just outlines or solid colors without outlines. I even tried watercolor shades, but this is the one that I actually like the most, which has a black outline and is colored inside and it's fairly geometrical. 
shapes. Um, I'm going to have other versions as well, the ones without the outline and also just um, kind of um, line art designs as well later on. So as you can see, I'm following the, the photograph as best as I can. And then once the illustration is ready and it's colored in, I'm going to copy the entire thing, paste it into the map project, and then I rasterize it because what happens is if I make the illustration too small, the, the thickness of the outline is going to change with the illustration. So it's best to keep it simple. You don't want to have 100,000 vectors in one map. So anyway, I'm going to create all the other illustrations as well based on the photographs and then insert them onto the map. Once I'm happy with the illustrations and how they look, how they are spread out, I'm going to start filling in the map with some nature and just some little things like mountains and trees, palm trees and um, maybe a volcano because I think there is one in Italy or two. And I'm also going to add a couple of waves onto the sea. Then I'm going to add some little vector travel icons onto the path to show which segment of the travel was um, done by what means or what vehicle. So you can see in the beginning, the journey was made in a car, so I have to create a car. And then the later segments of the journey were on a boat. So they were sailing from Italy to Greece, and then again, sailing from Athens all the way down to Crete and Santorini. So I'm going to create a little sailing boat for this and put it onto the path. And now the map is kind of complete with the illustration. So as you can see, it's quite simple because it has to just represent the map. It's not the kind of tourist map which would show you all the sites. It's highlighting the places that you visited. So this is the key in these maps. Once I'm happy with the elements on the map, I'm going to add my main titles and the subtitle or travel date. And if the customer would like to add anything else, such as a little story or maybe some photos, then that's absolutely fine. I can add those in the last stage. And as you could see, this is basically my, my little process, my ritual for creating travel maps. And if you want to create them yourself, these are some steps that you can follow. Once again, if you like these maps and would like to create one for your own photo book, head on to my website, travelmapcreator.com, and you'll see all the available travel map options. And there you'll find more information about what you can have on the map and what different options you can choose from. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this interesting and relaxing and see you next time.